Hey everybody, Brandon with Flying Miata. We're back with another FM Live. Today we're gonna talk about radiators. What the differences are, how to choose the best one for you. Um, this is gonna be predominantly NANB, but we'll touch on some NCND stuff. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a quick overview of cooling. So the way, and we've got a bunch of videos on YouTube that go into a little bit more depth with this, but generally speaking, this thing makes a lot of heat. We need to transport the heat to a thing that will shed it, and then we need to help that thing shed it as much as possible. So the you know, reroute helps with transportation, the um, coolant mix and radiator cap uh, helps with transferring heat to the coolant, uh, and then fans and vents and ducting uh, and radiators can help with shedding that heat as much as possible. But today, we're gonna focus on radiators specifically. So we're gonna start off with your generic stock radiator. So this is out of an NB, so 99 to 05. It has plastic end tanks, it has an aluminum core, um, and it gets the job done, as long as you're not making a ton of power, or you don't have real, real high, um, high load situations, track use, that kind of thing, then this will, probably get the job done. The main thing you wanna watch out for is um, overheating if you've, you're putting more heat into it than your cooling system and the environment can shed and accept, but anyway. Um, the biggest thing uh, from, a, from a maintenance standpoint to look for here is if this is kind of a brown or a green replace it before it fails. The plastic tanks can get brittle and fail. It'll take a while, but mm, a lot of these are not very new anymore. So keep an eye on that. If you see white crusty stuff here, that means the rubber seal between your aluminum core and your plastic tank has failed um, or is in the process of failing. So replace it on your schedule, not on its schedule, because it's much more annoying to put, replace it on its schedule. So that's what's probably in your car right now. Now the first step, kind of, anyway, the first step is gonna be a replacement stock radiator. So you can see it's basically the same thing. It's got an aluminum core, it has plastic tanks. So same rules apply. And this is a radiator that we sell. So this radiator will last for a while, but it's not gonna last for forever because it has plastic end tanks. And that's part of why it's less expensive, but pros and cons. So the, the one that we sell specifically is Koyo radiator. So you know it's a good high quality radiator. And it also is for an automatic transmission. So you can see these guys right here. This is for the automatic transmission cooler. Uh, it'll work totally fine on a manual transmission car. You just leave these capped. Don't worry about them. You don't, they're not gonna hurt anything. The big difference here is the thickness of the core. Now, the thickness of the core can get out of hand. Too thick is not, uh, is not a good thing, but you can see the difference here between the core thickness of these two radiators. So um, the thicker core really makes a big difference in terms of heat exchange, in terms of cooling. Uh, hot tip, when we did all of our testing for the crossflow and I spent, hours, actually, that's not true. I spent days in that room sweating all of my various parts off. It was not fun, but it was, I did it for science, so it was okay. So one of the things that we discovered in that, and I'll talk about crossflow stuff in a minute, but one of the things we discovered is that a Mazda speed radiator, which is basically this, but without the transmission cooler, it does have the thicker core, is actually one of the best performing radiators outside of our crossflow that we found. So. This is a really good budget option if you need something cheap, you need something to get going. You have a little bit of increased load on the system, but not a lot of increased load on the system. And you're okay with, I'm gonna have to replace it in 10 years or something like that. They'll last a while, but not forever. So we also have our generic aluminum radiator here. Um, I have no idea what brand this is and it doesn't really matter, but basically, the idea here, or what I wanna kind of point out, is that it's basically the same thing as a stock radiator. Your tanks are on the top, the core is up and down, <clears throat> um, so it's the same format. So, you know, pro is that it's gonna install very easily because it's just a straight drop-in. 
usually. Asterisk on that kind of quality. Uh, your results may vary based on the quality of the part that you are installing, but so the advantages to this one, uh, it's aluminum tank, so that'll shed a little bit of heat, but it's also, again, assuming it's a quality item, not gonna have the plastic tank failure. Um, a thicker core, which is good up to a point, the problem with a thicker core is that it's going to increase the resistance to airflow, right? So as you have a given amount of air hitting the radiator and trying to go through it, if there's a lot of pressure here, then the air is gonna go around, it's not gonna go through the heat exchanger, through the radiator. The other problem is that if there's, there's a big temperature difference here at the front of the radiator, uh, because the air has just entered it, by the time you get to the back, there's not as much or very big, uh, very much of a temperature difference between the coolant and the air. And the bigger the temperature difference, the better your heat transfer is and the better your engine is going to be cooled, you know, the better your coolant temp is going to be kept in check. So uh, these are okay. They're way better than this. They're not really that much better than this, but they do look a lot better and they should last longer. But the right answer, in my opinionated view, is our crossflow radiator. So you can see this one looks different. So let's, we'll go back to stock. Sorry, not enough room for all of my things here. So you can see tank on the top, <clears throat> tank on the sides. So in this one, the coolant comes in here, goes down here, and then comes out here. So it's in the radiator for that distance, right? On this one, the coolant comes in back here, goes across here, much longer span there, and then comes out on the backside here. So that means it's in here longer, it can shed more heat that way. This is thicker than stock, but not crazy thick, so you don't have uh, the resistance to flow and the, the dramatically decreased temperature delta on the back end of it. Uh, and then there are also d other details in here, um, really dense on the tube and fin count, which we found was very helpful for shedding heat. Um, and I will take a small moment here to point out airflow. These are high flow fans with a heavy emphasis on the quotation marks there. Um, they pull 80 watts. That is a good indication that they are almost definitely worse than your stock fans. If your fans have a very, very shallow motor like this, don't buy them, buy, stick with your stock fans. This guy pulls a bonkers amount of air, can make a huge difference, particularly to the effectiveness of your air conditioning as well. So anyway. Um, now, what kind of radiator do you need? So, number one, are you overheating right now? If no, then your capacity, your ability to shed heat is okay, as long as we're talking about not overheating in the worst situations that your car and your driving habits and such will see, then you're okay, but you wanna make sure that your radiator is not a ticking time bomb. The plastic radiators uh, are that way, they're good for a while. They're not the worst things in the world, but they have a very finite time limit on them. Um, if you're just looking for a standard stock replacement, this guy, an automatic uh, stock style radiator is great. Works really well, definitely increased capacity, so you're gonna have a little more headroom. If you are having trouble staying cool right now, something like a Crossflow is an awesome option. I, honestly, I would just skip over the generic upright guys uh, because this is gonna shed the heat much, much better. Something else to bear in mind is that, you know, if you are making 90 horsepower now, uh, but you're pretty sure you're gonna do a turbo kit in a year or two and you need to replace your radiator, go to the good radiator. It's not going to overcool. That's what a thermostat is for. So try to, Try to look at the big picture, see what you're gonna do ultimately, and buy it once. You know, cry once, buy once, whatever that phrase is, to make sure that you get the right thing and you don't have to rebuy later. So uh, now the cross flow idea, Mazda knows about this. That's why the NC and the ND have cross flow radiators from stock. So they still benefit from an aluminum uh, radiator, basically an aluminum version of the stock one, a little bit thicker, 
higher capacity, all of the stuff that's in this, but we don't have to change the format of it because Mazda got it right at the beginning. Related, these cars need a coolant reroute. I'm not gonna go into the details of that, uh, but these cars need a coolant reroute. The NCs and NDs don't because Mazda did that uh, from the get-go. So the, let's see, yeah, and more power, more power equals more heat, it's physics. So the more power you put into the car, the more you're gonna need that ability to shed heat. So that is my uh, story for radiators and such. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. Mike is furiously tapping away at the keyboard over there. Are there any questions for me? <laughs> okay, well then uh, I will go through my earlier questions and then we will come back to see if we have any live questions. Okay, what is the difference between the eBay aluminum radiators compared to other big brands? You know that phrase, you get what you pay for? I think that applies. So, and that applies in ways that you may not think. Uh, the, I, I can't speak to the quality of the eBay aluminum radiators in one direction or another. They don't give me warm and fuzzies, but I don't, I can't speak to them. They're very much gonna be duplicates of the stock radiator. My guess is that there's not a lot of engineering into what kind of tube and fin count is best, what kind of details on the fins are gonna help shed the heat, shed heat the best, that type of thing. The other thing is our customer support department is here. I, good luck with eBay's customer support department. So if you have any issues with it, or if you have any questions about what, what are the next steps, whatever, we can help you out with that. eBay probably can't. Um, this guy, if you're looking for something budget, known, good quality um, brand, aluminum, or excuse me, a uh, automatic version of the stock radiator is, is a good, not the, not the best thing, obviously, that's this, but it is a good budget option for you if you're real tight on, on cash. How often should I change the coolant to keep the cooling system happy? Uh, I'm sure there's, what's, what's the factory spec? 30,000 miles on that. So the, basically if you can pop the radiator cap off, if there's sentiment and stuff in there, you need to change it now, otherwise, every couple of years, it's not a huge wear item. Uh, brake fluid gets neglected all the time. Coolant, as long as you're starting out with the right mix, you're not using tap water, so you don't have all the minerals coming out of it. You're not using only water, you're using something to have uh, the corrosion protection and the lubrication and all that stuff in there. It'll last a while, so. Scientifically, how much better is the crossflow radiator and why? I will refer you to our knowledge base where I believe we have an article about me sweating my various parts off in that room, uh, testing a bunch of different radiators, crossflows, uprights, different tube and fin counts to uh, see what is the best. And it was scientific. This, we put a specific amount of energy, as in heat, as in horsepower, uh, into the radiator, we controlled the airflow, we controlled the ambient temperature as much as possible, which was a challenge because it got real hot in there. Uh, but anyway, short version, you can see all the numbers there. Um, spoiler alert, the crossflow, this one specifically, shed the most heat between the inlet and the outlet, even though the ambient temps were way high in the room at that point. So it was under worse conditions and it still shed the most heat uh, between inlet and outlet. If I have no issues at the moment, what are some circumstances where I would actually need to upgrade my radiator? So you wanna upgrade your radiator if you are having overheating issues or if you are going to provide, or you're going to have more power, which equals more heat in the future. Um, now you can postpone that for the future from a power standpoint, but make sure again, you check your radiator. We see a lot of stockish Miatas uh, with very, very not black end tanks. Uh, again, if it's not like a, this, this one's actually okay uh, in this black and I don't see any, any indication of crust here for that seal leaking. 
But this plastic will turn to a, a brown. If it's green, it's real bad. Uh, but the, the darker it is, the better it is, the lighter it is, the closer it is to an outright failure. And, and just this will snap off because the plastic gets brittle and tired. So that's the kind of thing that you really, really want to be proactive about. Um, okay, those are all the questions. But now we have live questions. Yes. Good question. So why don't we do the more than single pass radiator? Because we tested it and it was not as good. Um, we did that on the NANB uh, in there and then we actually also did it on the NC. So it's, it's kind of the same situation as uh, a core that's too thick. You know, the, the coolant comes in and it goes over here and then it goes over here and then it goes over here and it's gonna heat it up that much more each time and the delta is gonna be, the, the difference between the coolant and the temperature of the radiator is gonna be less every time. Uh, the other thing is resistance to flow. So you're gonna decrease the amount of, of fluid, of coolant, you're pushing through the heat exchanger with each pass that you make. Um, in some situations, uh, drafting, you know, if you're in a spec Miata or something like that, uh, a thick radiator, maybe with multiple passes, could be beneficial, but basically you're just delaying the inevitable. Um, you have a bigger heat sink to put energy into, to put heat into, but once it's saturated, it's not gonna shed heat as well. So hopefully that answers that question. The really short version is that we have experimented with double and triple pass radiators, and in our experience, a single pass has outperformed it every time. So will we need a radiator for NC turbo? That is going to depend on what you're doing with the car. So with our NC turbo, we're paying very close attention to the heat, uh, thermal management, coolant flow, all that fun stuff. So the need, the need for improved cooling will be lesser than with other kits. That said, you are increasing the horsepower quite a bit and horsepower, you know, more power equals more heat. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So if it's a street car, there's a decent chance you'll get away with a, with a stock radiator because it is pretty good. It is a cross flow. It's quite big uh, for a Miata. It's got a lot of surface area to it. So you have some advantages over something like an NA uh, NB to start off with. Also, your car already has a reroute, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, that said, the harder you push it, the more likely it is that you're going to need improved cooling. So if you're gonna to go to the track a bunch, yeah, there's a pretty good uh, chance that you're gonna need a, an improved radiator, an aluminum, basically an aluminum version of the stock setup, a little higher quality, uh, denser, or excuse me, thicker core, but not too thick, dense on the tube fan count, all that fun stuff. So hopefully that answers that. No more questions, all right. Well, there you go. Hopefully you learned something about radiators today. If this was good, give us a like. If you have ideas for videos, again, drop them in the comments. We are doing this every Thursday, so come back next Thursday, see what new and exciting thing we're going to talk about. Thank you very much. We'll see everybody later.